Hello there, and welcome to another Luffy vlog. I am Seeloof the Floofy Luffy, and today I'll be talking about aliens! Before I get started though, I'd like to note that this topic was inspired by, and could be considered a bit of a response video to, Sci-Fi Reasons for Humanoid Aliens by Certifiably In-Game, published last year. <clears throat> now then, as someone who appreciates truly alien extraterrestrials, and have tried to come up with a few myself, I've found a major issue with the whole process to be familiarity. Aside from it simply being easier for us to relate to things that are physically and culturally similar to ourselves, it's extremely difficult to imagine things that are completely without personal reference points. Let's start with the basics. Judging by what we've observed of life on Earth, it would seem two main requirements for technological advancement are high levels of intelligence and abstract thinking, and the ability to finally manipulate our surroundings. Humans accomplish these two things with large brains and a set of hands. But we're trying to make truly alien aliens here, and I've actually heard someone argue that we shouldn't use any evolutionary trait that evolved here on Earth, not even the T formation of eyes, nose, and mouth, let alone a humanoid form. So let's give this a try. We'll start by scratching the hands and pondering something else. Our aliens could use trunks instead of hands. But now we're basing our aliens on elephants, which aren't exactly aliens, so let's try that again. How about a mass of tentacles and donut-shaped brains to boot? Except now we're taking inspiration from octopi, and as strange as they are compared to us, they're still beings from Earth, so we still don't have alien aliens. What about a hive mind and man ants? But they fly- wasps, bees. They have an exoskeleton, insects, arachnids, crustaceans. Alright, so they have an endoskeleton, and we're back to us. They have no skin back to octopi. So what other options are there? If you can think of any, and yes, that is a challenge, would it even be viable? How would we know unless we had a real-world example of it in action? Ah, shoot, foiled again. Similarly, we've built our civilizations on land. Could a civilization be born and built underwater? How would it work? What technologies would or even could they develop within the atmosphere of water? Since we started on land, it's taken massive strides and advancements in our technology just to do anything under the waves, making it that much harder to imagine a civilization starting in that end. How could it even get off the ground without such a basic innovation as fire? And there we're relating it back to ourselves again, because that's our baseline reference point. Surely there must be other ways to achieve what we've achieved, other paths to take that lead to technologically advanced civilizations that don't necessarily have to start with fire, or... And on top of how the environment would shape their civilizations and technology, how would their anatomy shape their technology? Human technology is very much shaped to work for humans. Human hands, human legs and spines, even human ears and noses. But what would anything look like if it was developed by and for a tentacled kintarifant? And then there's culture. Humans have covered a lot of variations here, from religion to science, from slavery to equality, in many varying forms to many varying degrees and everything in between. But what would a truly alien culture even be? Not entirely unrelated, what emotions would they feel? Most things on Earth that possess a brain, or even just a passing resemblance to one, seem to experience fear. Even the most brainless of bugs appear to panic if you corner or try to grab them. And for anything with the ability to get out of harm's way, a swift kick of primal fear tends to do the trick in getting them moving fast, naturally leading to better chances of survival, which leads to better chances of passing on those genes, which you get the picture. So fear is rather univer un um, <clears throat> global? Fear is a prevailing global trait among living organisms also gifted with expedient self-locomotion. It's pretty useless for a tree, though. Like, what's the tree going to do? It can't do shit because it can't move away, so fear would just lead to stress and anxiety and detrimental to the tree's health without improving survival at all. So, you know, I dearly hope trees don't feel fear, and that's all I'm saying. Moving on. But although fear is quite a global trait for things with self-locomotion, is it universal? Are other emotions... 
Is it reasonable to assume anything intelligent enough to build society would feel the whole range of human emotion? Or is that just arrogance? Is that holding humans as a baseline model for anything that would be advanced? And from a storytelling point of view, would we even be able to write an interesting and compelling character who does not? I mentioned a challenge earlier, and indeed, if you can think of an answer to any of these points, or can think of an example of something truly alien to everything we know on Earth, let me know in the comments. Be as verbose or concise as you want. As for my own opinion, I think since convergent evolution is definitely a thing, there's no reason why aliens on another planet can't evolve practical adaptations for their environment that happen to look a bit like the adaptations we see on our own planet. Eyes up top is very useful after all, as well as having the mouth at the front of the body, though I still think it's a bit much if they look exactly like humans right down to the boobs on the females, especially since even on our own planet, humans are the only species who have that. I think a combination of traits we've seen in action might be the best way to go about making a truly alien alien, like the tentacled Kentari fund from earlier. Isn't it cute? But this is the extent of my own ramblings for today. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, click like. If you enjoyed it a lot, consider sharing it around and subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out a lot and would make my day. You can also follow me in all these places for all sorts of updates and unique content. While the most important stuff reaches all of them, I do post a lot of different things on each platform, so it's definitely worth following me on more than one. Links in the description below. Off, off and away!